Hey guys, Pastor Ben here with another review and reflection. Today I want to talk about this book, uh, The Underworld, Journeys to the Depths of the Ocean, written by Susan Casey. Uh, this is a book that came out just last year as I'm recording this, 2023 is when this was published. And uh, it's something that I originally started listening to on uh, as an audiobook, and then um, my checkout of that expired and somebody else had it in line, so I had to go to the library and pick up a print copy to finish the last uh, hundred or so pages in person. But I'm excited to give you my thoughts on this uh, interesting book. So I picked this up because I was curious to learn more about uh, the ocean, and obviously this is a book that's exploring um, the history and story of uh, humankind's exploration of the ocean in general, and specifically, you know, the deep sea. So um, the area, you know, below 600 feet down, where you get down to the to the to the very depths of the ocean. And uh, this is a book that is written by not a, a, an ocean scientist per se, but by a woman, Susan Casey, who has had a long history and interest in um, marine studies and deep deep sea exploration. She's written a couple of different books. Um, kind of in this vein, and this is her, I think, most recent book. So she is sort of a, a scientific journalist. Uh, her training is as a journalist. She's written in a number of different magazines and different books and things, but I think has kind of uh, worked herself into this field of writing uh, scientific journalism specifically related to the ocean. And so this is her book on deep sea exploration. Um, as I was reading the book, what she's in essence doing is trying to give readers both a, a history of kind of mankind's understanding of and exploration of the deep sea, which again, she's defining as, you know, using the common definition of that as being anything below uh, 600 feet down, um, which is the area of the ocean that makes up 95% of the earth's ocean is that area below the surface. And yet most of what we know, even as we're kind of charting you know, uh, the the land and the oceans and we're exploring and we're sailing, almost all of our interaction is happening at that kind of very thin top layer, if you will. So most of what actually makes up the oceans, and of course the oceans make up most of our planet, most of that is kind of in this category of the deep sea. And there's different kind of ways of breaking up that huge chunk of the ocean. And she talks about that um, you know, the twilight zone or the hadal zone. There's kind of different terms that are used for different depths as you work your way down. Uh, but that's the kind of part that she's interested in exploring. And so she kind of follows that story of mankind's exploration of the deep sea historically. She has a, a chapter or two where she dives, no pun intended, she dives into um, sort of the, the pre-modern way that people thought about the deep and how it was obviously something that people really didn't know anything about directly because we didn't have the technology, uh, the submersibles or submarines to actually go down ourselves and explore. And so most of it was sort of based on myths, stories, impressions, imaginations, ideas, and kind of stories that people had heard from sailors about things that they had seen or maybe things that had been kind of dragged up from the deep by fishermen or, you know, later on scientists trying to kind of pull up whatever they could. And so she kind of traces the the story of how uh, people have historically thought about the deep part of the ocean. Uh, but of course, what the predominant kind of theme that you get is it's a region that's just, you know, shrouded with mystery and people know very little about it. Then she begins to trace the story of what she calls the aquanauts. So you know, if we think about astronauts as those who are exploring the deep heavens, aquanauts are those who are exploring the deep sea. And she traces the history of some of those early scientists who were seeking to actually go down into the depths. And one of the ideas that had kind of emerged, you know, I think in the pre-modern world, people had this popular idea of the depths as being this place of chaos, this place of monsters, this place that was kind of, uh, you know, opposed to human life. And you very much get that in mythology in various ways. By the 19th century, you know, the scientific revolution has been taking place for a while at that point. And the kind of common view that had come to be accepted was, well, no, that's just kind of a primitive idea. Actually, the deeps is really more of like a desert, you know, almost. Um, there's, there's really no life there. There's no sea monsters. You know, there's just nothing down there. 
And it was in the 20th century, really, that mankind actually developed the technology to go down for ourselves and see what's actually there. And that's the story of the of the of the aquanauts, right? Those uh, early explorers and scientists who developed the first submarines and the first submersibles that could actually go down into the ocean depths. One of the things that they discovered, you know, if you think about a normal kind of submarine, you think about this long, narrow thing sailing through the ocean. A lot of that is still happening kind of in that top layer to go down into uh, the deep ocean, uh, especially if you want to go down to, you know, regions like the Hadal Zone or the Abyss right down at the bottom. You have to have a different kind of submersible, a different kind of ship. And we've become more used in, you know, used to seeing in the news and things, stories about these uh, vessels that go down and they have to be, you know, uh, perfect spheres so that the pressure because uh, the pressure down, you know, the further down you go is, is more and more. And so only a sphere can kind of withstand the pressure. And even there, it has to be incredibly well engineered, incredibly carefully tested. You have to use the right materials. So it's a very complex process, which means that our knowledge of the deep sea is something that's really very recent. Most of the people who were kind of pioneers in this are still living, or if they aren't, we're like a generation removed because it took humankind a while, right, to get to that point where we could have the technology to actually go down into the depths. And so the bulk of her book is telling the story of those different explorers uh, and them going down into the depths, what they learned, and what we uh, as, uh, uh, as humans have learned about the deep sea through that time. One of the themes that kind of stands out through the book is how little we know, even today, about the deep sea. Of course, if you think about, you know, pre-scientific revolution, pre-submersible age, you know, we, there we had very limited resources to actually understand what was going on in the majority of the Earth's oceans, which means the majority of uh, planet Earth itself. Um, and we had very kind of cloudy ideas about things. And even today, we have mapped just, you know, a, a small portion. When you compare what we know about the kind of... Um, layout of the oceans versus the layout of the land, there's a huge gap there. So the, 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 the terms that are used there, of course, we, you know, we think about uh, surveyors who go out on land to map the topography of the earth. So we, we know kind of the geography of the land that we are living on and exploring and all of that. Uh, bathymetry is the term that's used to describe that process for the deep sea, for the ocean bed itself. And so we are still you know, um, figuring out the bathymetry of the ocean and uh, the layout of things. We're still learning. Virtually every time humans go down into the depths, we, we discover whole new species, um, things that we never expected before, things that turn on their heads, certain theories or ideas that scientists have had. And so it is an area of exploration, truly. So one of the kind of comparisons that she makes throughout the book is that you can kind of, if you want to get your head around what it's like to explore the deep sea and also the, the, the benefits that can come from exploring the deep sea, you can kind of put it as a parallel with what we see happening in, in space, right? Uh, astronauts who go into space are stepping into uh, environments that man was never made to enter into. So you have to have all sorts of very complex, very expensive apparatus, suits, ships, uh, supply and safety mechanisms and all this kind of stuff, it becomes very, very hard just to exist and to learn anything about uh, that. And we know very little about uh, the heavens and we know very little about the ocean. In fact, she kind of makes the argument we know even less about the deep sea than we do about the heavens. I think I'm not sure exactly how you measure that since we're measuring what we don't know anyways. But I think her point rhetorically at least stands that... Um, we're used to thinking that we don't, we, you know, we, we want to learn more about Mars. We want to learn more about these other worlds to discover planets that we've never been to before and have never even seen before. And yet we often are assuming that we've kind of learned what there is to learn about our planet. And that is so far from the case. There is so much we don't know about our own planet and specifically about the oceans uh, in our own planet, which, of course, is the majority of the space um, so she says there's kind of a parallel you can think about there of, of, of exploring the heavens with exploring the deep. And, um, and likewise, there's a lot to be discovered, a lot to be explored in those places. And so what she's doing in this book is writing 
as a scientific journalist who's also someone who's just passionate about the ocean. She's writing about the men and women who both have uh, undertaken that deep, deep sea exploration and those who are undertaking that deep sea exploration. Again, one of the things that um, I don't think I had kind of processed before is just how recent and current so much of this story is. Um, these are not sort of things that have you know largely been explored. We're in the beginning stages of this because only now is the technology becoming such that humans can reliably and regularly go down into those deepest regions of the ocean and begin to chart it out, begin to study it, and begin to learn it. And so she spends a lot of the book um, talking about different people who are doing those things, and in very journalistic fashion, she goes and um, you know lives on ships with some of those who are who are who are having these deep sea explorations. One of the guys she talks about a lot is Victor Vescovo, who is you know a tech million billionaire who spent who spent a lot of his fortune uh, designing and building uh, these incredible uh, submersibles, and then going down repeatedly to some of the deepest places, um, you know, uh, the Mariana Trench and the Tonga Trench and some of these places that are very, very deep down and exploring them and mapping them and charting them for the first time. And that's something that he's been doing just in the last few years. So it's very much contemporary. It's very much journalistic. She's giving you her own thoughts. She's interviewing and talking with other people. In that sense, just my own personal review, it was a bit of a different book than I thought it was going to be. I thought it would be a little bit more of a um, kind of uh, third party, you know, scientific take. I thought they might go through some of the history of deep sea exploration and talk more about the science of what we know about the deep sea. It was not so much that. This is not so much about the deep sea itself as it is about... Uh, mankind's exploration of the deep sea. So you do learn some fascinating things about the ocean, right? That you probably don't, you know, didn't know before. I, I certainly did. And you get, definitely get a better understanding of why uh, the ocean is so important and why that deep sea exploration is so important. Um, again, the ocean makes up most of our planet. And um, we know very little about the majority of the waters that make up the majority of our planet. And yet what we do know about the ocean shows us how important it is. Uh, the vast majority of the weather patterns that we see and experience are, are stemming from the ocean, the way it works. A lot of our food comes from the ocean. Um, increasingly, countries are looking to deep sea mining as something that might be valuable economically. But again, when you do that, it has all sorts of implications for ecology and affects everything else. And so we know the ocean is very important. We know it's very vast. We know it's very complicated. And yet we don't really know a whole lot about how it functions, which means we're not well equipped to kind of gauge um, how we can use it and how we can protect it and how we can balance out our use of the ocean with our call, I would say as Christians, to steward uh, the ocean's resources as well and to not just exploit so it's something that is very important and very pressing because uh, corporations and countries are quickly moving forward to just exploit and use without always having a good understanding of what actually makes the ocean tick and why it's so important and how to balance all those concerns. So this book is, to some extent, you know, there's, there's points where she's definitely giving kind of a call to action of how people should think about or engage with the ocean, how important it is, and how it shouldn't be this kind of forgotten thing that um, is out of our vision, but rather something that we see as important to understand and explore and preserve. Again, when you make that comparison between uh, space exploration and deep sea exploration, you have some similar conditions, some similar challenges, some similar prospects in terms of things that you could learn or discover or whatever, and yet the amount of money that's poured into space exploration dwarfs what we give to deep sea exploration, even though Exploring the deep sea is right on our doorstep. It's all around us and is our is part of our own, a, a central part of our own planet. We would not have life on this planet without our oceans. And yet we spend a tremendous amount of effort and energy to explore other planets without really understanding our own. So I don't think the argument there is to say we shouldn't be exploring space or learning about space. That's important. 
but it's a reminder that there's a lot of um, unexplored frontiers and a lot of discoveries to be made right in our own backyard, if you will, that we should probably be investing in even more as a society. So this book is an attempt to kind of call our attention to that. Um, like I said, it's not quite the book that I thought it was going to be, um, but it was a good book nonetheless. There were times where, um, you know, I, this is about a 300 page book. It does have, again, I told you, I started listening to uh, an audio book version of this, but if you can get the print book, you'll see lots of great pictures, which is very helpful to kind of understand some of the things that she's describing, some of the people that she's interviewing and talking to. Um, it, it was it was heavier on the kind of interview journalism side of things than what I was looking for personally. However, once I kind of understood who she was, I, you know, I, when I picked this up, I didn't realize she's a journalist. So knowing that helped me to understand, okay, what she's doing and to just take it on those terms. It's a very interesting book. It did make me want to learn more about the deep sea, to dive more into the science of that. Um, and I think I've got a good kind of introduction to the field uh, from this book. And it's something that, again, it's a good entry point. I, you know, I've never read any books on deep sea exploration or the science of the deep sea. And I feel like I've got a little bit of an introduction and sense to things that now I could pick up other books that are more focused or more technical and be able to begin to track and understand them. So if you're interested in deep sea exploration, the history of that, the science of it, um, this could be a book worth uh, worth looking into, The Underworld by Susan Casey.